being in this uh, urban environment make us uh, behave in a way that is unnatural in his opinion. If you restrict the amount of space that an animal has compared to what it usually has, you know, of course it'll get agitated, but the same thing will happen with people. Yeah. So I find, I think, that I, I can get more angry about things to do with what happens on the land than I can do about, say, the bank cheating me when I'm in London, because it's more abstract. I used to work in HIV healthcare, and there, we found this weird seesaw effect where you get an epidemic under control in one country for a while and then there'd be this massive side of relief and everyone would stop doing the things that brought it under control and come back. And I mean, we have this kind of, uh, kind of exceptionalist view of our species that we can kind of solve any problem. It's an economy question of governance of the city and that's what went, going back to your point before about the way in which large sections of the community are excluded from housing market and that uh, you know a lot of government policy focus very much on boosting demand for housing. What about the supply of housing, what about supply of quality housing? You start to compare to these mega cities where it's gated communities. I mean this doesn't exist here. So I think we're very privileged, but nevertheless it's a social experiment and it's growing. That's the intriguing part. You know, there are possibly even kind of two species cohabiting in this city. But in reality there might only be less than a percentage of a percentage. Now suddenly there's 13,000 of them in a room in the city, and you can become the king of this virtual. <laughs> and now that area is, you have housing that's been there for over a decade. The children are growing up in areas where there's less green space. And I say that whether or not there are cases of anxiety and depression, whether we know that happens in the animal kingdom. And I say that because when I have been to zoos, and you see a polar bear, for example, who laps off his cage and just looks depressed. It's a huge risk, but you know we can go. Oh yeah, well we're so intelligent, so we'll be all right. So don't worry about it. No worries. I think one of the most interesting things we could do would be to look at the the pace at which we're able to adapt to these things, because what we really want to know, and I think a really fundamental question in the study of behaviour, is how well are we able to adapt to change compared to comparable change in another animal.